You're about to see a whole new intro sequence. Chug. Today's episode, we're going to actually talk about kind of keeping your pet things organized. And as you guys know, I've got a variety of pets, and so I'm going to show you where I keep all of their things. Um, this includes reptiles, small animal, and dog stuff. So I'm really excited because I know as a pet owner, um, depending on how many animals you have, and even just having one dog, it can get kind of messy really fast. So I'm going to be showing you some ways that you can kind of keep things tucked away and in their place so when guests come over it's not seen and even when you try to find your own things they're going to be easy to find and access. So let's start with that. The first thing I want to show you is actually right back here and this is the entryway to my house. Right here is my front door. Actually you might be able to just kind of tell. Uh, but notice right by my front door I've got multiple hooks and yes my keys are here but I have the dog's harnesses and leashes I have their uh, little poop bag dispenser, so I like to keep the things that um, I'm going to need when I'm leaving by the door. It's just good habit to kind of have because, you know, when I walk my dogs, I leave out through the front door or through the garage door. Also, even though it's out, it's displayed nicely, so I don't have to worry about, like, constantly putting something away that I'm going to be using daily because I walk my dogs daily. I like that it's out so it's easily accessible and I don't necessarily have to put it away, but it looks nice. So the fact that I have created this hook system with my other keys, including the harness and leash, when people come over, it looks visually organized. Uh, now next is the food situation. So most people, you know, food is another daily item, but you don't necessarily want to keep your dog's food just out on the counter. Same with bowls. Hello and welcome to the fact that my kitchen is currently not clean. But that's the point of this video. I want to show you how I'm going to manage to keep it clean. So to start, uh, these are the bowls for my dog's breakfast. I don't have one of those like food water combos that some, um, I know some people do for their dogs. So to make this look less messy, because if I were to just leave this out, you would just see bowls here, right? And that doesn't look as pleasing. So I actually have a drawer in my kitchen dedicated to the dog bowls, the dog like scoop, feeding related materials, and so that's what I'm going to show you. So this is a corner of my kitchen. I designated this just one small drawer to my dogs. Uh, I don't have a very large kitchen, so many of you may have plenty of space to do this, and maybe you could do a whole cabinet, but I don't, and so if you do have a smaller cap, um, kitchen, it's completely possible to kind of designate a drawer for your dogs, now you just have to keep yourself organized in the rest of the area, which I've done. Designate for your dog's food in the kitchen, because I believe most of us feed our dogs from the kitchen. So here's what I do. This is what the drawer looks like. Um, back here I do have a couple uh, lunch boxes that are mine. Now you can actually see I have the rest of the bowls in here. And notice I have no dog food in here. I actually keep the food in another location. This is just for bowls, accessories, and things like that. So what I've just basically done, and I'll reorganize this. I lay down a little mat in the bottom of the cabinet. And because this is really just bowls, um, I've organized it this way. So, and then what I basically do is I just layer my bowls according to the size they are. You put the larger ones on the bottom. If you're someone who's doing this on a shelf, it's probably going to be much easier because then you could just kind of stack them into the shelf. And as you notice, I do have a lot of bowls when I'm stacking them in. That's just because I'm like a typical pet parent and I like when I see a cute dog bowl, I want to have the dog bowl. So I have a lot, uh, which means you might need less space or you might need more if you have a larger bowls. Um, I also keep their wet food scoop in here. Uh, and then I always have a little plastic bag. This is for travel. So it's easy accessible. And I think that's the key here is putting things where you can use them at the place you're needing them. I kept the leashes by the door. I'm keeping my bowls in the kitchen. The food, I keep the dry food here, and this is another key thing, is kind of keeping things hidden, but um, nice looking. So I keep their kibble actually here in this storage bin, and it's out of the way, and no one's going to notice it. It keeps things looking nice, and notice, they're right next to each other, right? So I've got this dog bowls, I've got the food here, and then the wet food is in the refrigerator, but that's just right over there. So I'm keeping everything together right where I need it. Now I've got one more place to show you. Uh, this is not the last place, but it's probably the 
biggest place. So let me take you there. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my hall closet. This is the closet that's in my hallway. I was actually fortunate enough to, it actually had the built-in shelving already. So the shelving you're seeing came with the house, but this is totally easy to mimic. You could do the built-in thing if you're a handy person, or measure out the space that you want the shelving, and you can go to somewhere like Lowe's or Home Depot, and they have shelving you can just build separately and just place into your closet. That way it's less permanent, and honestly, that would come up with instructions and is easier to build and place in than trying to figure out all of this woodwork. So because this is a hall closet in the main of my house, uh, it means this stuff is in the middle and it's accessible from pretty much anywhere to equal distance. So right behind the camera is actually the rabbit room, which means it's super close to the closet here. So I keep most of my rabbit stuff here, as well as some of the dog stuff that I don't use as often. So this shelf here at the top is actually all dog stuff. Uh, you might not be able to see it because of the wall right here and it's like a tight squeeze with the camera, but right here on this side of the the left of the shelf is where I keep the canned dog food. I only need one can in the fridge at, the at a time because that's the one I'm using and needing to refrigerate and keep fresh. So all the other cans that I buy in bulk need to be stored somewhere. I could store them with, my, with the kibble. If you have room in your kitchen, store the things together. Canned food I don't need often and it's just, you know, every couple days I'll just pull a can. So I keep the canned food here. This basket here that's kind of cut off is where I keep all the spare toys. So I have their balls that they don't need as often. I have a new toy when their old ones get, you know, worn out. I have one that's already here. This basket is for treats only. And so I tend to do one treat bag at a time type of thing. And I don't feed treats super often. So I do keep one jar of treats in the kitchen uh, up on the counter above where their food was. But the rest, eating these like all of the time. When I go through that bag in the kitchen, then I'll grab this bag and it'll get moved into there. So I, I am someone who feeds a bag at a time. So these are all the extra bags that I've got that I'm just kind of keeping in storage. The other thing I will store in here is more of the long-term treats. So things like chews. So the closet, this is spare treats, spare toys. And then lastly, this little basket, which I'm gonna do a separate video on, but this is my medical basket. It has things like their flea and tick medicine, um, allergy medicines, emergency medicines, nail clippers, wipes. So this basket is my go-to if I need anything medical related. And I'm gonna make a whole separate video on this because I think it's very important to have one of these in your own house. And especially if you're gonna keep anything separated in a basket, it should be your medical supplies. Now, the shelf below. This is where I keep my dog's clothes, which is why I have two crates here. One crate is Olive's clothes, one crate is Minnie's clothes. If you don't dress up your dog, now you've freed yourself up a shelf. If you do dress up your dog, this is a really helpful system, especially if you have two, because I know which clothes are for who now. Um, I do eventually kind of want to do a better system because these are just crates. And so if you notice, it's very messy and I have to dig through the crate to find what I want. So I am working on a better system for these, but for now, this keeps it tucked away and looking nice inside of my closet. If you keep potty pads, that's another good thing to put in the closet. Um, blankets, I have a snuffle mat that I actually keep also wedged back between these. So larger stuff, keep in a closet like this. Back on the floor again. So uh, these two right here, this bottom shelf, and then the very end of the closet is where I keep my remaining rabbit supplies. So what I've done is right here, it's hard to see, but on the very left of the shelf, I have a small crate. This is my rabbit's veterinary crate. Because this crate is for veterinary trips, it's also an emergency crate. If I ever need to take my rabbit somewhere instantly, this crate needs to be accessible. Having it, having it in the closet across from the rabbit room is a prime location. But I don't want it to just take up the area, so I actually also store stuff in it. But if it's an emergency, I don't have time to kind of clean it out. So what I did was I took a bin and I use that to store the stuff that's inside. And in this bin, but I keep my extra rabbit treats in this bin, uh, it's hairbrushes in there, nail clippers are for the rabbit are in here. So everything I keep in this, this bin, and that way if I do need this in emergency, I just slide the bin out, and look, it's already empty and ready to go. What else I keep on this shelf is the smaller specialty haze. I also, um, I feed my rabbit Timothy hay almost all of the time, as rabbits should be, but I do like to keep other haze just to mix it up. So I have a little bag of oat hay, 
and I have a little bag of orchard grass hay and I just keep these two smaller bags here on the shelf. I keep my rabbit pellets also in the shelf, which is these are the ones I feed if you're curious. I do not feed my rabbit pellets every day or all of the time. This is more like a treat basis. And I actually have some space here, there's a gap, so I could fit a couple extra things. I do have a, a grass mat that um, I'll be replacing soon. The one in there is almost gone. And then underneath, I just keep two things because they're kind of large and they take up a lot of space. One is this bin. This is the hay bin. So this is where I keep all of the Timothy hay. I buy it in bales. I don't want to keep a bale open in my house. Hay would get everywhere. Uh, I also don't want to keep it outside because bugs then kind of find it fun to nest in and live in and eat from. So what I do is I take chunks from the bale and put it inside this large bin and the bin keeps it fresh and safe and away from bugs. And this I do not keep binned because there's not really a reason to, but this is just the Carefresh that I use, which is the bedding for the rabbit in the bottom of the litter box. And so uh, this I just leave in the bag and kind of tuck it away under here as well. But uh, this is where my Leechianus is kept. So what I've done is basically built in storage uh, and this is not something you can necessarily buy maybe find someone handy you know or if you could think of a similar solution they do make shelving systems but what i've done because this tank is so large is i actually built the base for it um so the base i built it is on wheels and that's because i'm not a very large person and there have been cases where i needed to move this like i just recently did actually and it's a lifesaver to have it on wheels because i there's no way i could pick this up now, what i did though is i didn't just build a base and stop there what are you doing? Did you come back? Yes. Hi, Alf. Oh, my best friends. And so what I did was I didn't just build a base and stop there. I actually made sure to cut out a hole and kind of create an open shelf. And then I found a basket that fit as best as I could. I have my calcium here. I have extra bulbs. There's more bulbs underneath those. I have moss that I can uh, wet and put in. I have my infrared guns. So that way it creates a seamless area and it blends in. So when people come into the office, what they see is the tank, not just a mess of stuff everywhere. It's tucked away, it's hidden. It's a color that matches the room scheme. And if you're curious, there's my lychee. Okay, for this last segment, I'm just gonna hold the camera. So what I wanna show you is the area where uh, my, like my little dog lounge area, I guess you could say. So I keep their bed here and their toys here. As a dog parent, you know toys can get everywhere. So I try to minimize that. I mean, they still get everywhere, but everybody kind of has a toy basket as a dog parent. And I think the type of basket you have is important for the type of dog you have. I used to just keep a standard kind of square basket and it made it very difficult for my dogs as chihuahuas to get down into the bottom of the basket. So the most awesome solution I think I ever thought of was actually to not get a basket, to not get a box, it was to get a magazine rack. So this right here is actually a magazine rack. And if you look at it from the side, that's why it has the little looping bottom here because you're actually supposed to stick magazines in. The toys are much more accessible now, especially to my little chihuahuas. And it has the high back, which I like because I can kind of stack toys up against the back, but it's low in the front. So my small dogs can actually reach in here and access any toy that's in this. It's accessible, it's stylish, and it's different. And it looks nice when you look at their little, like I said, lounge area, I guess. They have a bed, they have their toys, but it all seamlessly looks good. And so when guests come over, yes, there's dog toys out, but it's not like the obvious, here's a dog toy basket. It's tucked away nicely and something like that. So this has been all of the chug. I hope you enjoyed our space saving tips and kind of our like how to get things out of the way and make your house look nicer and cleaner. If you guys have anything you do that I didn't mention in this video and you're like, it works super well, kind of like my magazine rack idea, leave a comment. I'd love to hear about this stuff. Thanks guys for watching. Uh, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe if you really like it. And so I will see you next week. I post every Friday. Bye, Olive. Olive. Bye-bye.